So you're getting ready to sell the house you've called home for the past few years. People sell for all sorts of reasons, but as a realtor, my biggest concern is getting top dollar for my sellers. I want them to walk away from the closing table with as much money as possible. Hey, what's up y'all, it's Sean, your Charleston Realtor. One of the most common questions I get asked by sellers is, what repairs do we need to make before we list our home? Sometimes sellers think they need a perfect home in mint condition in order to get top dollar, but it's not practical to spend thousands or tens of thousands of dollars getting your home ready to sell. What if I was to tell you that there are three small things that you can do to increase the appeal of your house? These things are very easy to do and have outsized returns. But first, let's ask the question, why? Why do you, as a seller, need to do anything to make your home more appealing for a buyer? Well, buyers are not looking at your home in a vacuum. In fact, when they look at your home, they're comparing it to other homes for sale in the same area. You might have to leave your home for a few hours on a Saturday to allow buyers to view it. But I promise you, those buyers are not just looking at your house. In fact, your house might be the second, the fourth, or even the eighth home that the buyers see that day. So we wanna make your home shine in the best light possible so it's memorable. So here are three small things you can do to make your home as marketable as possible. First, if you don't mind, consider giving this video a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. My first tip for increasing the sale price of your home is to clean, declutter, and stage existing furniture. So first, let's look at this kitchen. It's pretty cluttered, right? Now here's the same kitchen, only free of clutter and loose odds and ends. Which looks better? Next, let's take a look at this photo of a living room. The home is clearly lived in. But how about that same living room, this time cleaner and free of debris? It makes the world of difference. The point here is that photos are your buyer's first experience with the home. Your real estate agent will be spending hundreds of dollars on professional photography as part of the marketing plan, but professional photos only go so far. The home should be clean and free of clutter before photos. This means take down most personal effects, remove refrigerator magnets, store excess furniture and items in the garage, and put anything and everything away as possible. I describe it to my clients like this. Let's try to make your home look like an Airbnb. I know it takes work, but the rewards can be huge. So let's talk about this flow path. Photos lead to showings, and then showings lead to offers, as long as the house is priced right and in good condition. We can't get good photos unless your home is clean and free of clutter. Photos get people in the door, and that's why having a clean and thoughtfully staged home is so important. So now when it comes to staging, we don't need to do much. Just arrange your existing furniture and decor in such a way to make it inviting to people. If you have too much furniture, then you're best off removing it or putting it in the garage. People want to see your home in a way that they can envision how they will live in it, not how you live in it. Minimalism is best here. If you have too much furniture or you're planning on giving some of it away before you move, then it's best to do that sooner than later. Next, and the second thing I want to talk about is landscaping and power washing. Just like decluttering and staging, a little work here can have an outsized impact. I'm not just talking about cutting the grass, though that is pretty important. I'm also not suggesting you hire a professional landscaping company and spend thousands on a new yard. But what I am saying is that you should clean up the yard. Less is better. Trim back hedges and remove those overgrown bushes. No bush or hedge should be in contact with the house's front side or back elevations. Buyers want to see the front of your home. If it's obscured with big plants or bushes, it'll almost certainly remove value. Less is more. Same thing goes with your backyard. A backyard with a whole bunch of trees, plants, and flower gardens is less appealing than a freshly mowed and empty backyard. As far as pressure washing goes, it can make a huge difference on the curb appeal of your home. Focus on the porch, driveway, and sidewalks. If you have a wooden fence, you can also hit this to make your backyard seem more vibrant. You can buy a decent power washer for as little as 150 bucks at most hardware stores. So just make sure you get the proper chemicals to ensure the job is done right. Or you can pay someone else a few hundred bucks to power wash it for you. Either way, it's usually a pretty good investment that doesn't cost much. Now, some people might be inclined to power wash the sides of their home, but I don't think this is necessary in all but the most extreme cases. You're best off using soft wash instead. Lowe's carries this miracle product that's literally called outdoor cleaner. You can buy this stuff by the gallon for super cheap. Spray it on the side of your home, wait 10 or 15 minutes, and then wash it off. Mold, algae, and dirt come right off. This is pretty necessary to do in South Carolina with the heat and humidity making perfect conditions for algae growth on the side of your home, especially if that side of the home doesn't get much sun. This is especially important because vinyl and hardy plate homes here are typically painted a light coastal color, so they show dirt really easily. Brick homes hide dirt and grime a little better, but it doesn't hurt to soft wash the side of those two. Now lastly, consider repainting your home's interior. A 2012 study by Home Gang showed that painting the interior of a home yielded 107% return on investment. And that number would be even higher if you did it yourself. 
Obviously, if you don't think you can achieve close to professional results, then you should probably hire a painter. But painting isn't too hard when it's done right. Just watch a few YouTube videos, buy high quality paint and brushes, and do a whole bunch of prep work before you get started. Ceiling should always be painted a flat white, and the walls probably a neutral gray or off-white in a satin or eggshell finish. Look at what the most trendy colors are in the year that you're trying to sell. Trim should almost always be a satin or semi-gloss ultra white, preferably in a formula that has a urethane or some other compound that helps resist scratches. Again, painting isn't totally necessary, but it certainly helps. This is especially true if you bought new construction a few years ago and haven't painted since the house was built. It's likely that the flat paint that the builder used has gotten very scuffed and dirty since you bought it. So let me leave you with this. Why do all of this work? Your home is perfect and well suited for the perfect buyer perfectly, right? Well, yes, if we find the perfect buyer, but the perfect buyer doesn't exist. Buyers wanna see a clean, finished home without many projects. It's unlikely that your flower bed or crowded furniture or blue walls will appeal to any individual buyer. And that's the beauty of home ownership. We find a place we can call our own and we can decorate how we see fit and build lasting memories. But when it comes time to sell your home, the name of the game is to turn over as blank of a canvas as possible so that the future homeowners can easily envision where they will put their couch without having to worry about removing bushes or painting the ceiling. So that's my take on a few things that will help sell your home for top dollar. As a realtor, I can't force you to do anything, but I can certainly advise you in that regard. Remember, 85% of home shoppers are looking to purchase a home to live in, and not everyone loves home projects. So catering to the majority is your best strategy. So that's my take on those three things you can do to help sell your home for top dollar. As always, if you're looking to discuss Charles from Real Estate, my contact information is in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video.